And so we arrive at the season seven finale, and I've been so very excited to see what the MLP staff have in store for us. And while I have read up on the upcoming episode synopsis many weeks ago, and thus have at least a shortened summary of what to expect, I decided to do something a little different this year when it comes to my reviews. Instead of watching both parts and then giving my thoughts on the whole afterwards, I'm going into this with the plan to go through the first part of the finale only, write up a script, record my dialogue, edit all the video together and render out the review, and only afterwards go on to the second part of the finale. In this way, I'd like to see how my thoughts might shift on the finale if I see each of these episodes as individual stories rather than a complete arc. It may change things for the better, or for the worse, I don't really know. But it's something I wanted to try at least once. So, with all that in mind, let's have a look-see at Shadowplay. First up, I am loving this intro sequence. Even if you haven't seen any other entry in Season 7, this tells you everything you need to know in a very short amount of time, while building up a lot of intriguing lore. To be honest, even if we hadn't had any of the previous episodes that were introducing these characters of legend, I wouldn't have felt lost with this quick setup. Granted, I would have felt a bit cheated if they were suddenly introducing all these characters completely out of nowhere, with the exception of Star Swirl, of course, but given all the new additions to the lore, I think it far outweighs any shortcomings. And it seems that they are hinting that Star Swirl and company first planted the seed that eventually became the Tree of Harmony with this opening. Given just how much focus they are putting on each of the main six and how similar their virtues are to these legends of old, I have to imagine they have all kinds of plans for these characters in future seasons. If that is what the writers had in mind for them. But while we're on that subject, let's talk about each of the short sequences for the main six here. It is nice to see all the little easter eggs, returning characters, and I'm genuinely curious as to how far each of them had to travel in order to obtain all these artifacts. But part of me actually wishes that these stories were each given their own episode. I mean, could you imagine an adventure through the Dragonlands with Rainbow Dash and Spike? Showing all of Dragonkind an entirely different view of ponies? I mean, if anyone could pull that off effectively, it's gotta be Rainbow. So, it was a little disappointing that such a sequence had to be cut short because there was so much other material they had to get through as well. On the other hand, though, I am reminded of the Cutie Mark Chronicles all the way back in Season 1, where the writers also managed to pack a whole lot of information down into a single episode, and still managed to do so very effectively. And, yeah, I think much the same could be said here. A whole lot of world building, a whole lot of ancient lore, a brand new threat on the horizon. Although, I have to imagine just about everyone watching this story had to have guessed that when Twilight was seeking to release Star Swirl and the others, they would inevitably release this Pony of Shadows as well. And while some might consider that a bit of a hindrance on this season finale, I can see why it would work very well for the story. After all, this is Twilight we're talking about here. I mean, you think you've seen Rainbow Dash fangirling over Daring Do? Twilight was geeking out over Star Swirl even after he had been gone for more than a thousand years. We know Twilight is a character who can obsess over a project to the point of overlooking critical details. And it wouldn't surprise me that Sunburst would be much the same way. In fact, I find it a little ironic that, for once, Starlight Glimmer is trying to be the voice of reason here. She's the one trying to step back and say, let's stop for a moment and think about this. But getting back to the cliffhanger ending here, we have what I suspect to be the proto-elements of harmony, alongside those who were not too long ago the modern-day elements of harmony and now they are beset by a villain who seeks to rob the world of hope. It's a rather engaging setup, with elements I have been looking forward to seeing for a very long time indeed. I am really liking the voice actor they've chosen for Star Swirl thus far, a very calm and inviting presence that just radiates wisdom, and I'm really hoping they keep these characters around for a long time yet. 
but I have yet to see part two of this finale, so let's wrap this review up and take a look. See you guys in the next video. And until next time, I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you.